Hello everybody, this is Eva Saiva from Cyan. Welcome to this short video presenting to you the EU cybersecurity regulatory framework for medical devices. So what are medical devices? Um, they have been defined by the medical device regulation and the in vitro medi diagnostics medical devices regulation of 2017. According to them, we have medical material, medical instruments, apparatus, appliances, software, very important, implants, regents, and in vitro medical devices. And what is the EU cybersecurity regulatory framework for these types of devices? Now, bear in mind these, um, for example, here we have the GDPR 2016, MDR and IVDR that we've just mentioned, and the NAS2 directive adopted last year, late uh, 2022. Now, bear in mind that uh, these are all pieces of legislation that do not necessarily regulate only the field of medical devices. Clearly, MDI and IVDI, yes, but GDPR and NAS2 directive have broader scope. So what the GDPR, clearly this is the General Data Protection Regulation, and because medical devices process and store a lot of sensitive patient data, a lot of personal data, the requirements in, found, found in the GDPR are very relevant for um, this particular sector. Um, so what are these um, cybersecurity requirements that we find under the GDPR? First of all, we're talking about Article 32, uh, Security of Processing, and it gives us, uh, it indicates um, that companies that process personal data, process or store personal data, <clears throat> need to adopt technical and organizational measures for personal data protection. And what are examples of these technical and organizational measures? Now, bear in mind, these will be different uh, for the different companies. Um, clearly, again, um, because we talk about med the medical devices manufacturing sector, uh, which is high highly sensitive, um, so it would be required to be a, 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 at a very good level. So examples of these measures, here we have um, pseudonymization and encryption, for example, of the data, multi-factor authentication when accessing network systems, strong identity and access management, again, of systems of networks, regular data backups, again, of the sensitive data or, or, or of the, uh, all sorts of data of these device, regular system updates um, because some medical devices, because sometimes we have um, software, for example, what we see in the previous slide, we have medical software. So this is particularly important uh, when we talk about regular systems updates because um, sometimes uh, software providers uh, stop supporting certain uh, versions of the software they provide. And clearly this opens uh, um, the way for vulnerabilities and you know these vulnerabilities can be exploited so regular system updates and then a regular patching of vulnerabilities we ne whenever um, you become aware of vulnerability do patch it so this we found with these cyber security requirements we find under the GDPR what are the cybersecurity requirements we find under the MDR and, and the IVDR? Now, these are two sector-specific regulations, uh, but they um, clearly regulate um, other aspects, uh, not only cybersecurity. But the cybersecurity requirements here, we've divided them into two um, sections. Let's call them general and design and manufacture related. The general requirements are, for instance, risk management and safety risk controls. And the design and manufacture related, here we have secure development and life cycle management. This is particularly important because each medical device needs the cybersecurity, its level of cybersecurity needs to be um, guaranteed throughout the whole life cycle 
of its existence. Access controls, we've mentioned it with the GDPR show. And here we have secure interoperability too. This is particularly important because each device needs to operate in a safe environment. So for example, if we imagine again, the medical software, it has all of the other uh, uh, um, devices, it may be connected to the hardware, it may be connected to, it, they, their level of cybersecurity also needs to be guaranteed because the, the interoperability of the whole environment needs to be guaranteed under the MDR and the IVDR. Another particularly important piece of legislation, a very recently adopted NIS2 directive, um, it's uh, it's a cybersecurity legislation, so it does not it, it covers more sectors. It's a horizontally applicable uh, piece of legislation, so it's not um, it it does not cover only the medical sector. Um, here we have, for example, manufacturing and medical devices manufacturing companies have been included under the important sector, important entities, which makes them particularly, particularly relevant. And um, the cybersecurity requirements, the NAS directive instructs these um, entities to adopt are, for example, um, now, I, I, before listing them, I think it's important that we mention that um, all of these pieces of legislation, they do not necessarily, each of them, they do not necessarily offer different set of cybersecurity requirements. You know, very often we see the same uh, cybersecurity requirements, they repeat, they're repeated. But the thing is, each piece of legislation adds a different angle. It adds a different, um, it adds different granularity. And because we talk about sectors such as medical devices, which is particularly sensitive, particularly important, this is why we are addressing all of the um, all of this framework together. So NIS, uh, the cybersecurity requirements under NIS, we have, for example, risk analysis, risk risk management that we already saw before with the other pieces of legislation that we've mentioned. We have cryptography, HR security. Again, this is particularly important because we know that a lot of the data leaks actually happen due to human error. So there's a lot of sensitive data that can be, that, that medical device process that can be leaked due to human error. Security in network and information systems acquisition. We, we see this again, incident handling, cybersecurity training, again, training personnel, employees, they need to be trained on a regular basis because the, the threat landscape is ever evolving. Supply chain security is something particularly important here. Supply chain uh, has become a major threat over the course of the last uh, couple of years and is predicted to become one of the major threats. Um, in the next uh, in the next few years, it is particularly important for the medical devices sector because medical device manufacturer needs to address in their risk management frameworks also the cybersecurity preparedness level of their suppliers of their providers because. Um, Whilst each company is responsible for its own cybersecurity, operating in a safe environment uh, is always is always a, a, a requirement. So each medical device needs to um, make aware its uh, providers of these cybersecurity requirements, even even if those providers are not under the scope of NAS uh, two. Other requirements, we have cyber hygiene. We see again MFA, the multi-factor authentication, information system security, we see it again, and business continuity, guaranteeing business continuity. Another thing we wanted to mention, um, the, regular, um, the regulatory framework, the heavy security regulatory framework um, is very, closely uh, linked in a way, uh, for instance, to the um, ISO 27001 standard on information security. And why do we say this? Because, um, because the 
ISO standard, it encompasses all, all information security. So it's not specific to cybersecurity, it encompasses all information and sec information security of a company. Um, so having the standard uh, facilitates, and in some cases prove compliance um, with, with the above mentioned laws. And um, we have a video on um, the importance of the ISO 27000 standard for medical devices companies. So you can check it out on our YouTube um, channel. And last but not least, uh, what can Scient do? We can uh, help you, we can support you, assess the gaps in your cybersecurity preparedness, taking due consideration of the specificities, specific specificities of your sector and organization. Um, you can contact us at info at scient.eu to get a free consultation with one of our consultants. You can uh, uh, follow our LinkedIn page, Cyan. We are very active on LinkedIn. And you can uh, follow, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cyan-Cybersecurity. Thank you.